Hello, welcome to the August Libra Time Project Meetup. Um, today we are testing our system in time for the 3.0 beta. Um, so join us that. We'll walk through how to set up and run Vagrant, um, as well as kind of how to go through and report bugs, uh, what's useful in a bug report for us and things like that. Um, but let's dive in immediately because our Vagrant install is currently broken. Um, so I am going to share my screen and you can work with me to fix our current uh, installer. Um, because currently web root isn't defined because we don't define it and it seems not to uh, seems not to run in default for some reason. User share airtime should be the default. Why is it not? Let's try that. So Vagrant can be installed using um, our docs on the website. Uh, so sudo apt install Vagrant or such like the uh, documentation is on the LibreTime wiki um, or on LibreTime.org slash docs slash vagrant on the website. Um, there's a step-by-step -step guide to getting vagrant installed. There we go. Um, and how to use either VirtualBox or... Um, either VirtualBox or LibVirt as the back end for it. Uh, currently, LibreTime supports um, Buster, Debian Buster, and Ubuntu 1804, Ubuntu Bionic, uh, as well as CentOS for our Vagrant installs. And as soon as there is a Debian Bullseye um Vagrant image uh, for us to use, we will add that support. Uh, it's pending. Ubuntu 2004 is pending as well, but that is waiting on a update to Liquid Soap in 2004 um, before we can before we can kind of get get that on the road. Um, but okay, so you can once you've got vagrant installed uh, vagrant up debian dash buster will create a, a debian buster install uh, and allow you to run it um, run it like that um, otherwise vagrant up ubuntu bionic will uh, spin up an ubuntu bionic box for you uh, and um, and that will give you it'll configure the box and then run the installer on it. Uh, so that'll take a while the first time it does it because uh, it's downloading and installing all the dependencies, configuring all the requirements and getting that all all there for you um once once it's up the first time usually that's enough for for more um and it'll be semi quick uh any times after that once it's installed you can go to localhost uh on port 8080 uh and step through the installer 
uh, which will allow uh, allow the installer to uh, go through and install everything that's that's needed. Um, configure the uh, database and so on. Right. Let's see how this install is going. Cool. And now that's set up. Um, so now if I, uh, let's see, can I actually just share? No, it's annoying. Oh, do you hear me, Kaya? Yeah, I can hear oh, you. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, I had troubles with Mike and I was a bit late. Sorry no for problem. being late. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. And you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, what did I miss? Um, so our installer is currently broken on Vagrant. Um, so I have, in theory, why is this wanting that? It's actually not that bad. Um, uh, busy trying to fix that at the moment. Um, for some reason, WebRoot's default wasn't being set properly. So uh, I'm just committing a fix to that now. I don't know how it worked elsewhere but um i think what um the perhaps what we were um doing earlier um in some way didn't set it correctly uh, install okay cool so that works um i'm just going to i'll just push the straight to master Um, fix default web root. That is merged. Um, cool. So if anyone is wanting to follow along, you can now clone master um, and it'll be ready for working um, and it'll deploy a working vagrant install. Uh, after going through the normal installer and going through uh, the various steps. You can use Vagrant SSH Debian Buster if you're using the Debian Buster image um, to go from uh, to SSH into the Vagrant box, uh, which will allow you to do things like restart the services and look at the uh, logs, make changes, things like that. Then you can log in using the defaults, admin admin and you've got a working install that allows you to test things um, 
it won't have anything by default. I've added um, a track during testing. Um, also, if anyone wants to play with a another um, another version, uh, yes, that I believe is what was failing. Um, so I'm now just. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just I th I'm sure I pulled that. Let me just check this uh, log. Okay. Yep. Uh, for some reason, I hadn't pulled uh, your fix there. Thanks. I'm going to revert the pull requests or the merge I just made um, because that is revert. Twelve ninety six. Cool. And as you can see, um, well, I suppose you haven't seen my terminal. Uh, from the terminal, um, you can rerun the installer multiple times. It'll just update what's there and the changes. Um, So what, what that does is um, allows you to develop and make changes and test things quite rapidly. Um, it will rerun the installer, update the changes, and then you've got a working LibreTime instance that you can test with um, fairly consistently. All righty. So let's dive into what makes a good bug report. Um, there's several things that are very useful in a bug report, um, which we have a template for. Um, so if we have a look at the issues, I should have set this up better. If you have a look at the issues here, uh, under new issue, we've got a bug reports template. Please use that. Um, it has the I, uh, sections that we need to work out what's going on and how we can replicate the bug that, that you're seeing. Um, so if you don't, don't include that, we can't really follow up on the bug. A bug that just says, it's broken, please fix is not very helpful um, and it doesn't really lead to something that we can reproduce and fix at all. Uh, it'll probably just result in your bug being closed. So first things first, please describe the bug. Um, what is it? What? Um, how do you get there? Um, exactly what are you seeing that shouldn't be happening? then how do we re reproduce it? How do we go from a base install image, um, usually we'll go from Vagrant, um, to the error that you're seeing? Um, also, please give us the expected behavior, i.e. what should be there? What, what should the thing be doing so that we've got a test case that we can implement um, in CI so that this bug doesn't happen again? 
and a clear way of seeing when we fix the bug uh, as well. Then the other useful things that we need that we need is what LibreTime version are you running? If you're running a older version of LibreTime, it could well be that the bug has already been fixed. For example, the um, the install issue I've just been fighting with for the last 20 minutes um, had already been fixed earlier in the day. Had I pulled the new version, I would not have had an issue. Um, then the installation method, what operating system it's running, how you installed it, um, and if there's any particular details about your uh, setup that, that you think are relevant. Um, if there's screenshots or the client, any like client details that are particularly relevant. Um, and then in additional context, uh, things like logs are helpful. So if there's any immediate things listed in the logs, uh, so that is things like um, under var log airtime, um, Zend, uh, the Zend log, or the airtime analyzer log, or the Piper playout logs, or the Piper liquid soap logs. Those are all things that are important to see and to do what, um, to reproduce the issue. Um, it helps us diagnose where and what is there um, and what what we can do to get that get that working. Okay, um, so that's issues. How do you get from a uh, from a problem to a report that we can try fix? Um, so I guess this the rest of this session is just up for experimentation, uh, playing around, seeing what we can break, and hopefully having a fairly solid um, 3.0 beta by the end of it that we can release uh, in the next couple days. Cool. So first things first, I'm going to test upload, make sure that we can still upload files. Right, so hopefully now we can see see my screen. Um, that's not good. Okay, cool. Um, so we have our first issue. This is pending import and has been pending import for a while. So if we go to Tmux and have a look. We can go vagrant SSH. Actually, let's do it on the side. Debian Buster. That's the vagrant image I'm using. And have a look at the logs for log airtime. Airtime analyzer. Tail. So it's unable to connect to the message queue, um, which means it probably needs a restart. So system CTL restart airtime anal Libre time dash analyzer API celery uh, play out soap. I think that's everything. There we go. Yeah. 
No, that seems to be the issue. There we go. It's receiving. It's received the file and it's replied that it's been analyzed correctly. And if we go back to, I wish I could just share one entire monitor. Um, go back to Firefox. It has now successfully imported. Cool. Um, so something to note there, don't forget to restart your services if you reinstall or run provision again in Vagrant. Um, it is uh, important as a way of um, tying things together uh, and making sure that everything is consistent in, in what it's doing. Cool. Uh, so let's dig into tracks. The audio player works and pops up and starts playing, which is great. I can edit. Uh, there's no track types. Um, I think those are settings. Hmm. Okay, so there, there we found a bug. Our track, we don't have any defined track types at the moment um, because we don't have any in here. And our documentation doesn't actually mention anything about track types. Um, so let's report a bug. I'm going to Libra time. Libra time. Issues. So we're going to report it. This is going to be a documentation bug. Um, so get started doc mutation does not um, I don't know whether we should do so here's here's something to think about in terms of the resolution of this bug um, so at the moment there's no default provided you need to create your own but there's no documentation that you need to create your own um, so there's kind of two ways we can approach this. One, we can document that you need to add your own track types um, so that you can use them in your application, or um, we can set a set of default track types um, that people can modify at their own, at their own, um, on their own later. Uh, so let's, I'm just going to describe the bug as I see it. And in the discussion of this bug in, and coming up to a resolution, we can decide which of the two uh, ways we want to go about it. Um, so, track types, track type list is empty and um, on default in store. So, uh, clear description of the bug. Uh, when a new time instance is created, there are no default track types, and the install set up documentation does not instruct the user to create any track types. This is confusing. Cool. Um, you uh, Settings. So there's also two different places where 
track types are set, um, which is potentially another bug that we want to look at. So uh, behavior, how to reproduce this. Um, so number one, create vagrant machine using vagrant buster. Okay, step three, install and restart. Opponents. Then we upload log in and upload to upload crack. So here's a place that you can see this issue straight on. So see track type none. Cool, so expected behavior. Here's where we can kind of discuss the two options. So either we need to improve documentation and tell users to add track types, or we need to have a set of defaults um, that help in most cases. LibreTime version, in this case, um, it is head, um, so it's FF, we just, I'm just going with a git commit. Uh, if you are using a versioned install, then you can use that too. Oh, give us that, give us that version. Installation method. This is Debian Buster. Buster. Cool. There's no other details. There's no screenshots applicable. Clients not needed, and there's no other locks. Cool. Um, I'm just going to add these labels now because um, I can, but these would be a, uh, added by one of the contributors um, when the bug is triaged. Um, so we want this in all the ones we want so we submit the new issue and there we go it's there we can deal with it and look uh, and handle it there cool so let's add some track types music mus visibility enabled save and show Cool and commercial com. There we go. I think that's a use, uh, a fair set of defaults um, just for this test install. Um, so now, if we have a look and go to one of these, try edit it, we can select a track type. Um, and that's obviously music. We can click save and it's saved and we check. It has updated the fact that it is a track type that we need, um, which is great. Save, so that, that works. We can edit, we can upload tracks, we can edit the library um, and we can create track types. The other setting I would like to do is set the default track type. Um, track type upload default, here we go, music, um, just to make that a bit more clear. Um, cool, so now let's test uh, smart, smart blocks because that'll allow us to test some other things. So this is test smart block and I want the track type is music 
and let's limit this to time remaining in show so it'll fill the show the rest of the show that's quite cool cool save next we create a playlist um, so this is a playlist of items um, cool and let's have a look at the tracks let's add two tracks cool save and the playlist and the smart block both work awesome great cool so um, now we can go to a calendar and we can create a new show so this is a demo show this so this um the now is known to be broken um and that's a documented bug uh, it's got something to do with the time zones uh, so we are dealing with 1935 uh, to 2035 we add the show and we can schedule tracks so we do, let's test a track. Cool, let's test a playlist. Cool, let's test a smart block. Boom. And that will fail to fill the entire thing because we don't have enough tracks to do so. Um, it will try not repeat things, um, but they all add, add themselves to the show. Cool, and in about 20 seconds that should start playing and we can test whether, that's, whether that plays out. Okay, let's have a look at our settings. So we are using our default uh, streaming. Um, we haven't configured any master source or show source, um, but that should all be there. There we go, we can now test that things are working. So local host 8000. Firefox, we can test. We've got play out. Great, cool. Um, so what this means is the basics of Libre time are working, uh, which is great. Um, we are playing out and running things as, as we expect. Um, obviously, there are more bugs and things, how we do things, uh, just because that's the nature of software. There's always going to be bugs, um, and we can't find them all. Uh, I think there's some problem software development that um, any line of code... Um, no, any piece of software is guaranteed to have at least one bug in it, uh, and any piece of software can be reduced by at least one line. Therefore, it follows that any piece of software can be reduced to a single line, and that single line will have a bug. So, what that means is there's always a bug queue of things that we need to look at and we need to work through. Um, currently, we have 147 bugs op or issues open. Um, that doesn't mean all of them are bugs, but um, a fair majority are. If we filter by bug 58 are, um, have that tag, and we need to obviously try fix those. Some are things that aren't really or are going to change uh, maybe a lot of work to change uh, to implement um, but they're still things that are priority and need dealing with um, as well as the fancy new features uh, that we would like to implement um, and and handle um, but yeah that kind of covers the majority of what what I wanted to do with this um, and talk about kind of how do we test Libra time? How do you go about creating bugs? How do you go about testing uh, Libra time for yourself? And maybe it's a way that you can get involved with Libra time as, um, as a developer, as a contributor. 
um by all means we are always looking for more more contributors the to-do list never gets shorter um it only ever grows so uh, if you are interested in getting involved, uh, you can join us on Matmost or Discourse. Uh, so chat.libretime.org or discourse.libretime.org. Uh, if you want more details, you can go to libretime.org uh, slash contribute. Um, and that'll give you a list of ways that you can contribute to Libretime. Um, but I'll open it up now for any questions or any comments um things about how to maybe go about testing or uh, questions about the beta release um if anyone's got anything like that by all means go ahead i am monitoring uh jitsi chat.libretime.org discourse and the youtube live stream um, so if you have any questions, please do let us know. Alrighty, um, then before we end off, there is a um, uh, one last thing that I want to talk about is the community survey. Um, there is a survey up on Discourse um, about kind of what platforms are being used for Libra Time and what sort of future things you want implemented um so if anyone oh um yeah in fact let's let the creator of the survey talk about it uh, i'm sure everyone's had enough of my voice <laughs> uh so Gina, do you want to um uh talk about it uh yeah sure just just give me a minute i can even present present some results about the yeah. survey yeah, so I think yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm most mostly it's the survey is about knowing who's using this software and which distribution and where our heads should head to. And I'm going to share the screen and present you some of the results. So um, the basic idea was to know which systems are running uh, on which the Libre Time is running. And the base of this whole survey was, should we remove uh, CIS5? Um, and we are missing uh, a lot of participation. We always have like 20 participants who, who gave uh, their opinion and yeah, voices. And here is some part of the result. So mostly people are installed as installing LibreTime on Ubuntu. And we have some left uh, person still on the old end of life version of Ubuntu. And we are mostly all up to date to the latest version uh, of LibreTime. Uh, Going to the system, that was the main question I had on, at first at the beginning of this survey. And I'm confident that we can move to uh, dropping Sys5 and using only system D. But this is also, we need some more participants to have a better idea, even though the, there is a lot of topics and uh, papers and posts on the internet that really suggest to move to Sys system D and not to stay on, on CIS-5. 
Um, another question we had, and we are still looking for some participants to know better because I want to know whether the person installing this uh, LibreTime instance platform are um, uh, IT persons or are just random person who doesn't really can handle probably uh, a command line interface, a terminal. And so most of the answers we have now are, are really say that we are are talking mostly to dedicated administrators who knows how to work with installing a software on the server. So this will help us on reducing the some work we have to do to make it easier for a person not really confident by with using a, a command line interface. And last for at last we were we we talked about whether we should embed um, a telemetry system in the in LibreTime, this is some long, long, long run uh, goal. And most of the answers are positive, and we will probably implement this in any next major version. This will allow us all to gather the, the information we we just ask with this survey. So this telemetry system mostly will ask about whether you are an IT person or just someone else who doesn't really know how to use a command line interface and their information about the system and the version of your, of your in, uh, installation. So we have a pretty good idea of what we are what we we were we wanted to know, but I feel like we're lacking a lot of participation, and so I want to promote a bit this uh, this survey, and I will recommend anyone uh, to head to um, the discourse topic uh, about this survey and just fill the survey, and so we will have a better idea, and this will just make sure we're not leaving anyone outside and and just forgetting what he might want. So yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm through this survey. I, I can have, hand you over there talking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah, so please do fill out the survey. Um, and I would like to reiterate for those worried about telemetry and privacy and spying and all of that st kind of stuff, we're not going to be taking personal information. We don't care about it. Um, we don't want the hassle of having to deal with it. Um, and w however we go about implementing some sort of telemetry system, it will always be out in the open, transparent and privacy respecting. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but you don't have to trust me. You will be able to watch it all unfold in the open on GitHub as as we do it uh, when, when we get there. Um, but yeah, please do fill out the survey. It does help us a lot um, and kind of helps us to know what direction we need to take stuff, uh, how we need to market stuff, where we need to... Um, add better documentation where we can assume knowledge um, it it helps us uh, a lot um, in in how and what we do there Awesome. I think that's pretty much everything. Um, the other topic I had on the agenda was the next meeting. Um, so the 17th of September is a Friday. Um, so potentially we're looking at 1900 UTC on Friday, the 17th of September. Um, but there will be a discourse post up about it. Um, open for discussion shortly too. I know the summer is, we're middle of the summer and most of the people are busy doing something else. But I was wondering whether we had some input about the other 
maintainers whether they are, will be present or have some more time regarding labor time. Yeah, so Rob, um, I think actually meant to be here tonight, but um, is busy. Uh, he's also stuck in, kind of in the middle of summer uh, with kids and everything like that. So I am would expect that he his involvement will probably pick up as summer dies down and people go back to school and things go back to a bit more of a normal rhythm. Um and I haven't heard from Lucas lately at all, so I'm actually not sure what what he's doing, um, or whether he's available at all. Okay. But yeah, perhaps what we need to look at is getting uh, more people involved in the core core team, um, so that we are able to continue on and keep keep going even when people are needing a break yeah but yeah other than that um so the next meeting is provisionally set for the 17th of september 2021 at 1900 utc that is a Friday. Um, other than that, thanks for thanks for joining. Um, I look forward to having 3.0 beta out in the next couple of days, and we can get that milestone ticked off the list. Oh, awesome! Really cool. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Kyle. Ciao.